and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to six player Disney Hocus Pocus the Game, designed by Prospero Hall and published by Ravensburger, who helped sponsor this video. Based on the Disney movie, the full moon of an All Hallows' Eve was shining bright when you and your friends snuck into the old Sanderson house. Then on a dare, you lit the black flame candle, and the next thing you knew, the three Sanderson sisters had returned to brew a terrible potion and sucked the lives from the children of Salem. Only you can ruin their potion and stop them. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the cauldron board in the center of the playing area and shuffle the spell cards which have this back, putting them into a face-down pile, along with the ingredient cards which you'll also shuffle into a face-down ingredients deck. Everyone is dealt a number of ingredients based on the player count. For a two or three player game, everyone gets four ingredient cards. And if you're playing with four or more people, everyone would get three. In this case, we'll set up a three player game, dealing out four ingredient cards per person. Now, you can look at your own cards, but keep them a secret from the other players. Next, place this witch board nearby and set this sun token on the starting space of this sunrise track. Also, keep these four trick tokens beside the board, as well as this stun token and the Binks figure. Now the player who most recently lit a candle will take the first turn. Or if you're in doubt, let the oldest player go first. But otherwise, that's the setup. In Disney Hocus Pocus the game, you and the other players will be working together to ruin the Sanderson sisters' potion by playing your ingredient cards into their cauldron. If you can create matching patterns, you'll stun the witches. Stun them three times and you win. The catch is that the Sanderson sisters magic will prevent you from talking with the other players about your cards most of the time. You'll only be able to share information when the game allows you to. And the game is played over a series of rounds and in a round you'll take turns starting with the first player and then going clockwise around and around the table and on your turn you'll perform three steps. And the first one allows you to ask a question about the ingredients the other players might be holding. The cards in the ingredient deck are made up of five different colors and five different types. We've got oil of boil, newt saliva, dash of pox, thine own tongue, and dead man's toe. When asking your question, you can only ask if anyone has a specific color or a specific type of ingredient. For example, I could say, does anyone have a purple ingredient? Each other player then answers either yes or no without revealing their cards or providing any other information. For example, they couldn't say, yes, I have three of them. They can only say, yes, I do, or no, I don't. Next, you must play one of your cards to one of the five piles in the cauldron. And whenever you play an ingredient, it must match either the color or type or both of the top ingredient of that pile. So if I wanted to play this orange dash of pox, I could either play it on top of the dash of pox space or this orange ingredient. As the game goes on, more and more ingredients will be played to the cauldron and players are trying to make it so that all of the visible ingredients either show all the same color or all the same type of ingredient. This will stun a witch and help you win the game. And we'll talk more about those patterns in detail later, but just keep in mind, that's what you're trying to do have all the cards on top be the same color or symbol. Some ingredients you play will have this Binks icon in the corner, and when played, you'll put Binks in front of a player of your choice, which could even be yourself. But while Binks is there, that player now plays with their cards face up in front of themselves for everyone to see. And Binks will stay with them until another Binks ingredient is played. At that time, Binks can be assigned to someone else or kept with the same player. If Binks is moved, then the previous player takes their cards back into their hand and the new player reveals theirs. Some of the ingredients like this one will have a spell icon on them and anytime you play one of these, the witches cast a spell. You do this by drawing and resolving the top card of the deck here. Each spell shows you which sister is casting it and names them here at the top as well as naming the spell itself and it also gives you the steps that you have to follow here. This one, for example, tells you to discard the top five cards from the ingredient deck, and you'll just put these into an ingredient discard pile. Once the spell has been resolved, you also discard it to its own pile as well. And if the spell deck ever runs out, just reshuffle its discard pile into a new deck. So those are all the rules for playing an ingredient card on your turn. And you must always play one, even if you don't want to. 
For example, you might be able to play an ingredient, but you don't want to because you almost have all the ingredients matching in the cauldron, and you know that by playing a card, you're going to break that pattern. But if you can play a card, you have to. If you can't play a card because there are no legal places to put it, maybe none of the piles match a color or type of ingredient that you have in your hand. In that case, you must discard at least one ingredient from your hand, but you could discard more. Either way, you then draw the same amount of cards to replace them. When you're forced to discard in this way, the Sanderson sisters cast a spell on you, so draw and resolve a spell from the deck. Either way, after playing a card or being unable to and having to resolve a spell, you then draw a new card. The player to your left will then take their turn, and this will continue until the round is over. One way for the round to end is by stunning a witch, and this can happen in one of three possible ways. And each different way will stun a different Sanderson sister. If all the ingredients in the cauldron are the same type like we have here, then you've stunned Mary Sanderson. If all the ingredients are showing the same color, then you've stunned Sarah Sanderson. And finally, if all of them show the same color and one of each ingredient, then you've stunned Winifred. Normally, one of these three outcomes will happen after someone plays an ingredient, but it's also possible for a witch to be stunned as a result of a spell being played. The spells are supposed to hurt the players, but sometimes you'll get lucky. Magic is unpredictable, after all. No matter which witch you've stunned, you then place this stun token on their picture here, and then move the sun marker up one space on this track. Now, while a witch is stunned, their spells no longer work. In other words, if you would draw a spell with their name here at the top, then you get to ignore it and just discard it. The exception is this spell here, because it doesn't name a witch at the top, so it will always be cast no matter which witch is stunned. After which is stunned, the round ends immediately. This means that if a person had just played a card that also had a Binks or spell symbol on it, you ignore those effects. Then, with the round over, the player whose turn it was draws a new card. Next, you're going to gather together all of the ingredients that are currently sitting in the cauldron, as well as any ingredients in the discard pile, and combine them together. Then, as I'm doing here, you're going to look through all of these cards and find any with a Binks or spell symbol on them and separate them out. These, you will then shuffle back into the ingredient deck to create a new ingredient deck for the next round. All the other used cards that didn't have a Binks or spell symbol on them, you're going to return those back to the box. They will not be used for the rest of the game. Also, if anyone has Binks in front of them, they must return him to the center of the table and then take their cards back into their hand. Now a new round begins with the player to the left of the one who last took a turn. And you'll continue playing until you stun a witch again. Now keep in mind, the object of the game is to stun the witches three times, but this doesn't mean you need to stun each one of them. You can stun the same witch three times in a row and still win. Every time you stun a witch, no matter which witch you've stunned, you'll move the stun token to them or leave it on them if you stun the same one again. But either way, you then always move the stun token upwards one space. And if this ever reaches the top space, the game is over and the players have won. The challenge is that each time you stun a witch, as we saw, cards are removed from the ingredient deck. And not only does this make it hard to stun a witch, it also makes it more likely that you'll lose the game as well. Anytime you need to draw an ingredient card, but the deck is empty, the Sanderson sisters are successful in completing their potion, and everyone loses. But just note, if the ingredient deck is empty at the end of your turn, that is the one situation where you are not forced to draw a card. Instead, you'll just keep playing with what you have left in your hand, and you might still all manage to win. However, if a spell forces you to draw, or you cannot legally play an ingredient, then again, all players lose. To help out, you also have access to these four trick tokens, and each can only be used once per game, but any player can be the one to use them. Then, once used, you flip the token over to show that it cannot be used again. This one, Circle of Salt, can be used any time a spell is cast. You then discard it and ignore that spell, but draw another one to replace it. After you've asked a question at the start of your turn, you can use this Daylight Savings trick to swap a single ingredient with another player. Each of you places one ingredient card from your hand, face down on the table, and then you each take each other's ingredients and add them to your hand. Then you would play a card from your hand as usual. 
Billy Butcherson can help if you don't want to play an ingredient this turn. Instead, after asking your question, skip playing a card and just end your turn right away without drawing another one. You can use the Burning Rain of Death to discard three cards of your choice from your hand and then you draw three new ones to replace them. Afterwards, you would then play a card and draw one as usual. You'll find those tokens helpful when things start getting tough for the players. But otherwise, that's how you play Disney's Hocus Pocus. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, Thanks for watching.